So today we're going to be looking at Cryon full cycle automation. We'll be kind of just diving in on high level architecture and we'll actually go through some actual some flows, some examples, and we'll actually look at content. So we're going to be jumping and starting with Cryon process discovery. So a little background, we've been around for, Cryon's been around for about 12 years. We've had process discovery in the market for a couple of years now. It's really what sets us aside from a lot of the other vendors in the market, right? We look at, when we look at automation and full cycle, we spend a lot of that time in that discovery and analyze phase. So we're using actually AI technology. It's going to be client server based. So we're going to deploy in a server. It's going to be on premise. And then we're going to have discovery bots. Basically, we're going to be defining maybe they're your web applications, desktop applications, you know, things like your personal bank account, Facebook. If it's not defined, we're not going to be discovering. So with this technology, we can rapidly deploy and then we can actually start to analyze the business in an unbiased manner. We're utilizing our computer vision technology. And what that allows us to do is to really understand from a keyboard and mouse type of perspective, right? How a user is interacting with applications through a workflow. So we'll start off here today and then we'll actually talk about the automate process. So once we've discovered these candidates, right? Depending on your current intake model, right? Sometimes we use consultancies. Sometimes we use you know, our own COE or we maybe use IT or we go out to the business lines. Well, using this technology, right? We're gonna discover these processes and then we can accelerate not only the discovery, but we can actually accelerate the development. And I'll touch on that as well. So I'm gonna flip over and we're gonna dive right into the process discovery console. So this is what you get. So right, traditionally you're doing these workshops, you're doing, you're flying out to sites, which is a little difficult in today's economic climate, right? We're doing these time intensive practices, right? Sometimes we don't get good documentation. Uh, we're missing data at that point as well. So with process discovery, once we deploy, you know, we're looking at anywhere from a few days to a week, we can actually start to produce meaningful data. And it really just depends on the volume and nature of your business or business line. One thing we can do is we support multi-tenancy. So when I say business line, we can do discoveries on multiple lines at the same time. I have like an admin view, so I can essentially see my different groups. So that's a real powerful feature, our ability to now analyze multiple groups at the same time. What you see here on the left-hand side are process names. These are actually business friendly names that have been given to after the fact. So once we've done a discovery, right, maybe a few days, a week, these are gonna be listed as numerically process one, two, three. This is where like a day in the life, we would sit with an SME, a business analyst, and we would review the information collected and, and we'll jump in and we'll do that together. So what we're looking at here is, right, we're looking for highly repetitive business processes. That's what we're trying to do with process discovery and full cycle. We're trying to look for new use cases. So to keep in mind, right, we might be finding attended automation scenarios. We might be finding unattended or hybrid examples. And I'll touch on some of those different type of flavors of automation. We're looking at a recommendation. This is gonna help us determine, right, if this might be a valuable candidate for automation. It's gonna be a comprised of some of the data that we've collected, right, using the technology, using our bots, we're gonna understand volume, right? Is this occurring, right, once a month, multiple times a week, multiple times a day? It's gonna be an important metric. We can look at things like users, right? We might have different users in different regions, or we might just have something simple as, right, someone who's been with the business for a while might be doing a process slightly differently. We maybe say streamline versus someone who's new, who's getting onboarded, right? They might be doing additional lookups and things like that. So we work differently among people and we can start to analyze that in variations. We're looking at things like steps, right? Steps are gonna give us a level of complexity, right? If we're new to RPA or if we're working with RPA, right? We have a process and it has a number of steps. So we may break this up into chunks. We may break it up, right? And have reusable modules, or we might attack something with a quick ROI, right? To get some, savings to the business. And we look at things like variance. Variance, kind of back to that example, right? Maybe if I'm new, I'm doing lookups, I'm doing a process slightly differently. And even in today's time, right? Maybe a lot of us are working from home where we're not accustomed to that. So we're having to interact with our, maybe our back office applications or our SaaS applications slightly differently from our normal day to day. So, you know, that might be a variation that we detect. <clears throat> and then we look at things like applications. 
right? We can filter on a lot of this data, right? Because we might do a study based on an application, we might do a study based on a tenant, or we might just look at particular users. One of the most important metrics is time, right? Ultimately, we might be looking at it from an FT, FTE reduction, right? Maybe a call handling perspective, right? Whatever the case might be, it's an important metric. Frequency. I mentioned multi-tenancy, right? And when we talk about full cycle automation, it's, it's not that traditional set it and forget it model, right? I've built an automation, I'm good, we get savings and on to the next, on to the next. It's revisiting, right? Business processes change, why? People change, they move on, right? We also have applications, processes change, right? Natively, even the actual GUI or something might change. So there's constant change. So it's in our benefit and our value to kind of invest time to understand. We have a cost calculator, right? We can start to analyze based on our time, some FTE savings. So I'm gonna jump into an actual process. So remember, this name was given to you after the fact. It's after we've done a review. So what we're gonna have here is, now we have this as an angular workflow. Keep in mind, this is a high level workflow. We have a starting point, we have an ending point. We'll jump in and we'll analyze and we'll review together. On the right hand side, we have some additional information. We're gonna provide you variants, right? When we talk about automation, we've heard that term happy path. Sometimes happy path isn't necessarily easy process. It might be that it's just the most commonly occurring path taken in a process. So based on our discovery, we're gonna present you that path. And that's gonna be based on a coverage model, right? We try to sometimes automate 100% of a process. So this is giving us an indication. Maybe the remaining 10, 20% are the workarounds or things that we have to do differently working from home. And then as we maybe add different variants and we'll take a look together, it might increase the time, right? Maybe if I'm doing these lookups, right? I mentioned if I'm new, I'm having to search different systems, look up codes. It's not natively inherent to me. So it might increase my process time. So just like our process, we're going to actually, it pays to invest and spend in time reviewing your variants. And the variants are going to come out, as mentioned before, variant one, two, three. It's a business friendly name that I've given to after I've reviewed. So we'll jump in and we'll do our discovery. So we have a couple of things going on here. We have our action, we have quick actions. We can see we're entering in information into forms. It gives us the number of times it was detected in this particular process. On the right hand side, we give you some of now the application level detail, right? I mentioned we have a whitelisting process, right? We can include things, we can exclude things. Um, in that concept then, right, we can have multiple applications in the process. So we see we're working with Excel, the name. On the bottom here, we can actually get a zoomed in version and we can now get more detail of what's occurring, again, at a high level. So just in the day in the life, right, traditionally, right, we might have to go on site, have discovery, workshops, interviews, and then we're getting this data, we're building this documentation. Now I'm using technology. So now I'm just really reviewing after the fact. So now we've going through the flow, we're coming into another application and you'll begin to understand the, the value in process discovery. So now we're in SAP HANA, it's a web application you know, for ticketing. We'll continue through on the path. We can now see we're interacting, right? We've interacted with a particular case. We've opened up some details. So now things are happening within here, right? We're qualifying, updating, so as I continue on, we'll see now the level of interaction is slightly changing within the window. We can now see, right, we're moving through different tabs, different sections. So I'll fast forward a little bit and we'll jump forward to the end of the flow, right? We're now again looking and we're looking for business processes. So they're gonna span applications. So in this case, in the end of the workflow, it's we're entering in Outlook, we're familiar with Outlook. We can see our email preview. And then as I go through, right, the um, user at that time, when we were doing our discovery, this is what was detected, right? Maybe this is a new ticket, right? It looks like it's a case being created. So maybe we can think of the scenario, right? This might be a new customer or a new ticket. So we have to maybe provide some additional information and you can see the interactions occurring during the process. So I'm gonna jump up and we're gonna now look at what we can do with this data very quickly. So we have a couple other sections here, details. Some of that main information we saw on the main PD landing page, we're gonna have some of that data, that metric, right? When it was detected, our users, apps, some important information. Um, history, right? I mentioned it's in your digital transformation journey, right? It's all about continuous optimization, right? Always trying to find savings, 
improvements. So we can move this technology, right? We can move it. I mentioned multi-tenancy, so we can move it to different groups very rapidly. And then right, we might do that on a quarterly basis. We might do that on an annual basis, biannual. So we have that ability as well, and we can always go back. So we're gonna find the as is today, and then we can always look back in, the, in, the, in history. Here now, we're actually coming into user recording. This is a really neat feature. But I showed you high level workflow. It's given us an understanding of what's occurring in the business, business line. Here we have now a different view. This is actually down to the user click level. You can actually see the green halo. This is where the user interacted with during this discovery. You can see some additional information, maybe the action that took place. Here at the bottom, you see one of 28. A moment ago, we did not go through 28 individual right screens or through that workflow. So right, this is more in detail. So I'll, I'll go through a few of these and it'll start to illustrate what we're getting now and the level of detail. We can actually see the physical interactions, the clicks, right? If they were copying, pasting, adjusting dropdowns. I'll jump to the end and right, we have now our, where we ended and we saw on the high level, we, we see them actually clicking send. So now this is, you know, this is tremendous value. We have this data and what we can do with this is very quickly is we can download this framework, what we call is like our PD export. So imagine, you know, you've gone through the business, you've analyzed like we've done today, you've given it a business name, this is of importance, we're gonna automate this. So I can download the full recording, I can download a range. Maybe the beginning portion of Excel, right, we will handle that differently. So really we're concerned about SAP HANA and then Outlook or notifying, so we can do a portion. And we'll go through that too. And then last, right, this is the as is process, right? What we're doing today in our business, right? Unbiasedly, that's the beauty of it. Cause right, you can ask 10 people how a process is done. Five might give you a similar answer. Five might give you slightly different answers. So it's taking kind of the human out of it and getting the value rapidly. So then here we can adjust the starting and ending point as well, right? If maybe we want to augment going forward, we can adjust as well. So I'm gonna take us back to the case creation and we'll look at a couple of things, what we can do now. So, right, I mentioned full cycle, how we can accelerate. So let's actually start looking at that. So one of the things we can do is imagine, you know, right, you're using a cry on, you're using our solution, our platform. Um, I'm gonna show you how we can bring that into our studio where we develop automations. But imagine, right, even if you're not developing the automations today, maybe you're using another vendor, we can actually create um, some deliverables or kind of assets, call it, that we can give to our team so they can now develop. So we can actually download what we call the PDD document. So the process design document. So right, this is gonna function as uh, our starting point where we can start to have kind of constructive conversations right between the business and right between maybe the developers. So we'll go through this and you'll start to uh, see the value. So we have, right, our players, right? In any assessment in RPA practice, we have our BA, or developer. We're gonna do versioning. I mentioned, right, we might redeploy this technology on a quarterly basis, so we have versioning. A theme throughout the document, the black text is gonna be system generated, so we're gonna provide you some information, and then the gray areas are where you can make your notes. It's free form. So now we're coming down to Right, again, contact information for a BA, support material, right? In our decision matrix, right, to automate, there might be other things we have to factor in. We might have reference material, we might link SharePoint. So we can start to kind of centralize some of this, right? Things get scattered, emails get lost, so we can now centralize this. And we look at process overview, right? Now really, the what is the actual inputs, the outputs of the process, right? Statistics, really getting into now the savings of it. And now what we have is we actually have that process documented here along with images, along with the objects, down to that click level once again. So right now you can take this document and you can hand it down to a developer's desk and they can build an automation, right? A lot of that time that we spend is now even being automated through this approach, right? We have one variant listed. We can include our different variants had we, you know, deem those as, you know, we're going to automate them or they're worthy for implementation. So right, we won't go through all this, but you can see, just like we saw before, we can see all the different interactions. And then at the end, we were interacting with Outlook. So you can begin to see the uh, value, right? This is something maybe 
right? You might be doing manually today. I mean, building documentation isn't right the most exciting thing. I don't think you're going to get a lot of hands in a room if you ask them, hey, I need you to build this documentation. Well, just a different approach. And then some food for thought at the end, right? Why are we automating this? What's the business value? Maybe, you know, alternatives, exceptions, right? Even in today's climate crises, we can start to really position better and right reporting regulations we might work differently in different regions so i'm going to jump back so this is one thing we can do another thing we can actually do now is we can download the event log so all these interactions down to that click level we can download and we can analyze maybe in another type of product if we want to try to do process optimization or improvements so we can get all the information collected very easily and then uh, the most exciting is going to be the automation file when we, again, speak of full cycle automation, it's essentially, right, taking what we've discovered, now implementing it. So I'm gonna flip over. And as I flip over, I'm just gonna come back to my diagram really quickly. So, right, we've kind of went through process discovery. I'm gonna focus on the automate aspect, right? We've analyzed, we found some candidates. We're gonna jump into the studio. And the studio is gonna be essentially living on your developer's machine. It's client server, again, just like our process discovery. So we'll flip over. So this is going to be the main landing page in Cryon Studio, right? We might call it our authoring tool or development tool. What this can do out of the box quickly is we can build attended automations, unattended, which pretty much this is unattended, right? We're pretty familiar. Repetitive tasks can be run on a VM without any human intervention. Um, hybrid automation and then our process discovery workflows. So I'm going to touch on that today. And then we'll take a look at attended automation, something maybe different that you haven't seen in today's market. So this is gonna be our wizard editor. What we call wizards or automations, just our, our way of naming, right? We can do the traditional recorder technology, right? This is where Prime really started from. This concept is there with probably some other products where, right, you go through an application, you go through all the different screens you record, right? You can also jump in with advanced commands right if you're doing html writing script or maybe interacting on the dom level we can do those things as well here i'm going to actually import that discovered framework so this is the file just about a minute ago that we downloaded so it's going to analyze this what's going to happen is it's taking that workflow that we saw down to that click level that user recording and we're going to provide you on the left hand side they're going to be thumbnails and we're going to see the actual steps and the objects that we were interacting with the different applications and then from here we can rapidly maybe we want to modify we want to add in some additional logic maybe we want to do some database calls or whatever it might be we can then enrich it or right even from a perspective of i like to always make the point right if we make something too complex Right, we're going to have to need always a developer resource, or we're going to need someone with that expertise. So now we have the ability, right, using combination of computer vision and that approach, we can make it more, you know, manageable even from a maintenance perspective. So now, just like we saw before, right, we were clicking on Harald, we were going through these different screens in the application SAP HANA. Um, Right, these are the service detail window. And then here I'll show you, right, I mentioned augmenting. So right, maybe this is today's workflow. Today we come in and put analysis data. Well, I can quickly change this. Maybe I go to contacts or I do another tab. I can, I can quickly duplicate. I can copy and paste steps. I can move things around quickly. And then even from a logical layer, right, process discovery, it's gonna provide you some logic, right? So maybe we have a decision point. I went back to my story of, right, if it's a new customer, we have to qualify them, giving them a little bit more information. So maybe we take a different path in the process versus an existing customer, right? We don't, we just give them a quick notification. So it's gonna build in some of this logic and advanced commands as well. And then I'll just kind of flip over really quickly. Since we're here, we'll take a look um, We'll look at some of the advanced command libraries. So, right, I'm showing you a lot of visual visual things today. It doesn't mean that we can't do a lot of the advanced things. It's just a different view. So, right, we can start working with variables, doing splits, mathematics, right? Process discovery is going to build in some of this, right? The conditional, the looping, the logical, if this, then do this. Um, right, we can manipulate our keyboard mouse actions. So we have a whole slew of doing like date and time. We can read files 
We can do folders, right? There's OCR, we have uh, Microsoft Cognitive Booster, and we have some of the Fine, Re Fine Reader Abbey, Tesseract, right? Maybe you're doing documents. So we can now also enrich in a lot of these things. And I'll touch on that, right? REST API calls. So you have a whole toolkit of like over 200 commands. But again, what process discovery has done is it's unbiasedly given us, you know, a dashboard of candidates. We reviewed rapidly. We've brought it into our development studio rapidly. And now we can augment and then start testing and roll out to production. And then the last view I'll just point out really quickly here is workflow view, right? Right. Sometimes when we think of automation, we have to think of the business, right? Because maybe we're building a library just in general, right? I showed you the PDD doc. Maybe it's a library of just visibility in your organization, or maybe it's something you automate today, or maybe it's something you automate in the future. So now we can see just kind of down to the click level. If you remember, I moved one of my steps to interact with the context section in SAP HANA. So we can quickly do these things as well. And again, we can save these images, put them into another document. So you have a lot of material coming from the consoles, from the dashboards. So I'm going to take us back really quickly just to reset us. So, right, we've looked at PD. We just touched on automating how we can rapidly, right, save time for the developer. What might be taking weeks to months, we can now streamline that time as well. And then, right, it's a continuous feedback loop, full cycle. So now I'm going to flip over to some of the automation side. So we have the concept of cry on console. This is going to live. It's a web based, right? We can access it from kind of anywhere. It's primary is going to be focused on unattended automation. Um, I, we won't be going in detail on unattended. We're probably pretty familiar, right? It's living on a virtual machine. It's just doing work repetitively. Um, I'll touch about our console though, how we can invoke things. We can also keep in mind, we can work with third party APIs. So, right, maybe it's a chatbot, maybe it's one of your native applications. We can kick jobs off as well through that mechanism. And then I'll touch on attended automation. So we'll flip back over. And this is going to be the Cryon dashboard for the console. So its primary focus is, right, to let us know jobs that are running. We can define logical groups, right, maybe for scaling purposes, maybe seasonality, and maybe even currently today we might need jobs to handle some of our you know, office activities that when we just had people in the office. Uh, we have right the concept, we can see what's currently running here on the left-hand side, if you follow me. Currently running, we have a concept of task queue, right? Maybe things need to be moved up in queue, uh, end of month type of activity, we can give higher priority. Again, we can always look at historical data, we can run reports, I'm not gonna bore you with reports today, but we can run all sorts of reports, usage, you know, activity, all sorts of things. Um, we can schedule and then I just want to touch on triggers, right? So when we speak of unattended automation, I talked about, right, we can interact or integrate with third party APIs. So essentially imagine an invisible button here, but we would give you the call and you can make that connection. But built in, right, we might trigger these unattended jobs, right? These repetitive tasks based on file updates, right? We update a file, we modify a file, maybe something's dropped in a folder. Maybe we monitor the email, right? We can start to understand even from the email, right? The subject, maybe who's it coming from? We handle differently. We can get attachments. So right, often we get a lot of things in it, in emails. Oh, we can work with databases, like Excel files. So really your options are unlimited. And then time, simple, right? Is it repetitive? We can set up different type of recurrences. Um, and then just from a management perspective, right, we can start to monitor if things are kicked off, started. So that's a really nice feature, right, as we start to scale. And then right, we can manage robots, groups. We have a 256 encrypted credential vault built in. So, right, some of these applications are web-based desktop applications that we're having to log in, maybe our email server. We can now store securely our credentials. So I really want to just kind of end then we'll touch on, right, the attended automation. So often referred to as employee or desktop automation. So we're going to kind of play a day in the life. So I have loaded up here Salesforce. Uh, you know, some of you guys are probably familiar with Salesforce, right, CRM. So imagine, right, even in today's current state, right, we're having to do things we're not normally accustomed to. Imagine being someone new right now, being onboarding, right? Onboarding or even application adoption. So like learning and development. 
So what we have here has been kind of hiding out, if you noticed, is my Cryon Assistant. So I'm gonna click on my Cryon Assistant. So this is my attended automation. It's living on my machine. It's gonna present me with maybe automations that have been created for an application. Um, I can search for automations. So in this case, it's saying, hey, there's an automation in your library for creating a new opportunity. So imagine being new, right? we go through onboarding, it's a week, maybe two weeks max. We go through a lot of material, even from a training perspective, right? We have customers that use this from onboarding even as their tool, because right, it's kind of having that human touch always behind you. So what does that mean? So we can run this automation in a couple modes. We can run it in a guide me mode and a do it mode. Guide me is kind of like, it's gonna navigate you click by click, enforcing maybe actions, clicks, um, kind of like a GPS. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick this off and you'll see a couple things happen on my screen. In a moment, you're gonna see my screen dim. Again, my hands right now are off the keyboard. And what it's telling me to do is actually click within opportunities. So we have a feature where we can block the screen, we can block kind of action screen. So maybe this is a transaction that you want enforced in a certain manner. We can now enforce that. So I'm gonna follow along. It's guiding me and telling me exactly how to create a new opportunity. And again, this is a web app. I could have done this easily for a desktop application. So as you can see now, I'm just gonna follow along and it's gonna to begin to illustrate uh, you know, the value on what this can do. So now we're in the new opportunity screen if I'm relatively new, right, I've had training, this screen's busy, right? There's products, what do I enter in first? Well, okay, there's red, well, there's this, what do I do? Now I'm using attended automation, we can anchor, we can show bubbles. So we'll, we'll follow along and we'll enter in some information, right, guiding me, giving me that personal touch. Um, even like this might be great for learning, but I mentioned adoption, right? We roll out new systems and unfamiliarity with, oh, we're transitioning, I don't, I don't know what to do. So we can use this as that as well. So right now it's telling me exactly, guiding me through the process. It might aid or facilitate. Here are a slightly different user experience. I've given a bubble, I've given an additional bit of information, maybe a business rule. Um, and then right, I'm just gonna continue on and it's gonna guide me through the process. So I'm gonna stop this as we start to understand what we can do. We can anchor, we can free float, I'm gonna show you a slightly different user experience. Right, imagine that was, I'm new, I'm having to remember, I went on vacation, I forgot, oh no. Well now, imagine, right, I'm a few months into my job. Now I know the process, but I'm on a call. Or maybe even if I'm in a call center, I wanna reduce my call handling time, right? We maybe get information from our externals and we have to put it into multiple systems. So with a bubble, we can even capture data and inject it into multiple applications. Meanwhile, focusing on the call. So I'm gonna do exactly that, right? I'm talking to everybody on the call today, on the webinar, so I don't need to click around and get to that opportunity screen. Hey, robot, take over, get me there. So what's gonna happen now, it's gonna move kind of quick, is it's literally my hands are off the mouse and keyboard. It's now, I have everything on my machine, so it's taking over, it's guiding me. So now you're gonna see, it's the same line of code, I'm doing a slightly different user experience. In a moment, you'll see, I don't need that guided approach. Well, what I need is maybe just some tooltips. We have tooltip technology. So that same information I displayed earlier, it's now displayed in a different manner. I've now just said, hey, these three areas, we have a lot of questions. Let's just put a little tooltip. Again, no direct integration with Salesforce. There's no coding in the background. We're using our visual approach, which is really nice. So from even a development perspective, a lot of people can build this right from a just learning perspective. And then maybe we're importing data in from another feed or something like that. So you'll see this, my hands are off. It's gonna take over and zip through some of this information. And then the last, so right, the last I'm gonna show you is, okay, we're a year into the job. I don't, I'm using, I'm, a, I'm an Excel, I'm, I'm great at using Salesforce, but now I'm never really using my assistant. Well, we can do something else. We have sensor technology. Imagine it as sense and enforce. Enforce what? A business rule. So now I'm gonna go through that same example. Again, I'm not invoking my client assistant. I'm free flowing. This is me clicking around. So I'll do exactly that. I'll just type in a couple of the required fields, right? I've been kind of trained through uh, the attended automation. So we'll put in some of the attributes. 
And then what's going to happen here is there's a business rule basically saying any high dollar transactions, we need to notify the VP of sales. So what I'm going to do is, you know, traditionally, right, if I did this, I would have to open up, draft an email, kind of like what I'm trying to do right now. Instead, I'm just going to have simply the robot take over. So I've created using sensor. You can't really see it, but what's going to happen is it's going to validate this amount. It blocked my physical action on clicking save. Again, Salesforce has no idea that I've blocked the action. I've stored the action. And then what we would do is it would essentially take you in to write your Outlook or whatever application, and it would draft up a particular email for you. So now we have a way of enforcing, right? Maybe I needed to make sure for error reduction or something like that, we can enforce um, different type of actions using sensor technology. So Anne-Marie, I think that's kind of getting up to the uh, time. Um, so just to recap really quickly, everyone, we've kind of touched on process discovery, right? The ability to deploy, collect rapidly unbiased information, how we can bring that into the Cryon Studio, right? That framework. Then we can start augmenting that, doing advanced things, maybe modifying, right? As processes change. And then right, we looked at our console, right? Looking at unattended triggers, we can manage groups, get information, metrics, analytics. We can even integrate with third-party apps, right? So that things can happen behind the scenes. And then with our server, right? It's gonna basically be a client server technology. A lot of it's Windows-based, SQL server, right? Typically you'll have your database on a separate box. And then communicating to your clients. Remember, attended automation, like we went through, the guide me, the different type of click-through functionality, that's gonna be on your employees right, across the whole entire organization. And then when we have Cryon unattended automation or robotics, right, that's going to be in a VM running those repetitive tasks that we're accustomed to today. So I think we can open it up for some questions, Anne-Marie. Yes, we can. The chat window is open, so hopefully somebody types something in. Otherwise, you can send emails to us later. Um, after you digest all of the fun content that we just shared with you. Um, doo -doo -doo. I mean, if you want, you can flip to the next one so they can get down our uh, my contact information and be aware of who to bug with uh, comments and questions. So, um, so yeah, it's me, Anne-Marie. There's my email, my phone number, call me or send me an email and we'll be happy to set up a more personalized demo or discussion about what um, Cryon RPA can do for you, both the process discovery and the unattended and attended bots. Um, there's this recording and there is a uh, session one, which was a couple of weeks ago, gives the basics of what RPA is, is also out on the Navient website. So if you need more information, you can just pop over there and check it out. And it doesn't look like we got any questions. So hopefully that means everyone is stunned into amazement with amazement. Oh, wait, maybe you have a question. Yep, we got a comment. Everything was all good. So I think we'll wrap up and let people get some time back in their day. Um, and if you want to be able to pass this along later, we'll be sending out a link to the recording so you can share it with other folks at your organization. Other than that, have a good rest of the day. Thank, Thank you, everyone from Navion and Cryon. Have a good day. Stay safe.